Today I'm not going to read the entire TWAB. There's a lot of info, so I strongly recommend reading it yourself, or check out my friend Drewski's summary video, that link will be in the description. As with most news we get from Bungie, we don't ever get all the info, only bits and pieces, and so some of the info out of context makes some individual changes sound crazy. But overall, there are net positives all around for PvE players and for intrinsic PvP players. I really appreciate the community management side of things because of the way they presented this info. They used a sandwich technique of making sure that any PvP nerf was met with a PvE buff, as well as mentioning that they are separately tuned. This is so important to making sure that the Destiny community doesn't knee-jerk react and complain away healthy changes to the game, because that's the real cusp of the issue here. Nerf doesn't mean bad. It's all about relative power levels and creating an environment where players can outplay each other in engaging in interesting ways. Shatter dive go burr? It's not interesting. It's not engaging. No one looks at the in-game roster and goes, oh shit, that's Dave, he's a crack shatter dive user. Because the reality is that Everyone is a Crack Shatter Dive user. You might hear that compliment about Void Walkers using Blink, SMG players, snipers. These proposed balance changes can create an environment where it feels more like player versus player and not player versus. Do they have God Mode charged? Am I important enough for them to waste it on me? PvP is supposed to be replayable and something you can grow at. When everything seems to be low risk, high reward, the replayability dies, but the accessibility goes up a bit. It's not a one or the other answer though. You can have both, and I think that these ability changes will keep it accessible while also allowing players to grow and utilize tangible differences in player skill to win more engagements. The key differences of the Destiny of today is that in the future we will have to pay more attention to build crafting if we want more ability centric playstyles. I think that's a fair compromise that makes the game overall more interesting. So with that being said, I'm very excited to see what Void 3.0 brings to the table if this is the type of balancing decisions that the team is making as of late. For the rest of the video, I'm going to try to field some hypothetical questions that I might get in a Twitch stream and try to answer them right here, uh, relating to the TWAB of course. Uh, first of which is, are you okay with one hit sticky nades? Maybe. It depends on what type of counterplay and what exact damage value and cooldown value is in the game. I know they gave us a like ballpark value, but I want to see what happens when you combine Bomber, Frosties, or Aeons when your teammate dies and you just keep looping Bomber. I want to see like how obnoxious you can get with these cooldowns before I pass judgment on them. And they also might be difficult to use. But then again, I also feel like the curving of fusion grenades of those stickies hurts me more than helps me sometimes. So I'm super curious if it's like that for other players, and only time will tell. We have to have it in our hands, but I'd like to see a situation where, for example, I get stuck by a grenade and then immediately think to glacier the floor so that I have damage resistance that allows me to survive it, or something like that. That way, for them to make sure that the sticky kills under any circumstance, they have to shoot me with a hand cannon first, then throw the sticky. What about one-hit shoulder charges? Okay. That one's pretty easy. I use shoulder charge as a mostly mobility tool, but it's not like one hit shoulder charging goes away just because the basic shoulder charge doesn't one hit. You can still use Peregrine. You might be able to use Heart of Inmo Slight. You can use Syntheseps. You can use Dune Marchers. There are ways to get it done. You can slide and just shoot one hand cannon shot into their body. There are ways to get it done, so I don't think it's going to be dead. If anything, it might be a net gain if it's easier to land in the first place. If it starts up faster, you can use it as an evasion tool more often. And if they add things like a blinding effect to it, it might be even better in a team scenario. Uh, with the variable cooldowns that they talked about, you might even get this crazy build on Top Tree Striker where you have flashbangs up all the time because that's a fast charging grenade. Overall, a lot of the builds that I enjoyed over the past year are changing subtly. Like, for example, this Gemini Jester build in the background. I use Gambler's Dodge here to get the explosive knife back. What this might mean is that I switch to either Bolstering Detonation on my gloves, or I go to Marksman's Dodge on something like Revenant. And even though Shatter Dive's not good, I have always used the Glacier Grenade as cover, so it would be those kind of adjustments for my classes. 
As Bungie moves forward with these kind of changes, I hope that they keep the relative balance between Titan, Hunter, and Warlock pretty similar. Because if they hit one way harder than the other, that's going to throw off PvP because most people pick Hunter no matter what. Hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you in the stream.